I'm going to talk about the decision to become a homeowner and I want to break it down into two questions. First question is should you invest in real estate? And the second question is should you invest in real estate as a homeowner? And this talk I'm going to focus on the first question and then I'll go to the next question uh, in the next talk. So should you invest in real estate? Uh, so you can imagine yourself buying uh, shares in apartment buildings as a way of investing in real estate. And let's say you were bu you're buying something that costs $100,000, and the annual rent that you'll get as rental income is 3000 So that means that the ratio of the rent to the price is equal to 0 0.03. If you invert that and you did the price to rent ratio, P over R, which is like a price earnings ratio for a stock, it's about 33, okay? Which is actually a very high ratio, as, as we'll see shortly. But let's, let's leave it <coughs> at 3%. So is that better than putting money into the bank? So let's say that we can put money in the bank and get uh, five percent so five percent is our interest rate okay we have five percent interest rate so let's call that 0 0.05 to give it the same dimension as the rent price ratio all right now next suppose that the uh, inflation rate the annual appreciation rate of the house so the appreciation rate is 3% per year. So what that means is if we were to borrow or take out of the bank uh, $100,000 to buy this uh, rental property, at the end of one year we would have 3000 in rent another 3% or 3,000 in capital gains and then minus 5,000 in interest so we have a thousand dollars okay I apologize for those of you who know, already know this very basic stuff what it boils down to is if you compare the rent to price ratio to versus the real interest rate real interest rate which is the in, I'll, I'll call the inflation rate the rate of appreciation pi and the nominal interest rate i when the rent price ratio is greater than the real interest rate then you should buy. You should you should buy real estate. It, you'll have a, it, it's better than leaving the money in the bank. And when it's less, you should put your money in the bank and not buy real estate. Okay, so that's it's a very basic financial calculation. It does need to be modified in the real world. An important issue is property taxes. Uh, property taxes might be, let's say, one and a half percent. So there's fifteen hundred dollars that you, <coughs> excuse me, you'd have to subtract from the rent. So if, uh, sorry, that let me write it more neatly. So if you have that in property taxes, property taxes, then the net rent, net of the uh, property taxes is just the 3,000 minus 1,500 or only 1,500. So that's that's one real-world complication. Another real-world complication is depreciation. Uh, the property is going to physically depreciate, which means you're going to have to put money in to maintain it. Um, also, uh, over long periods of time, features of the property will become obsolete, and uh, and you'd need to 
put money into it for that reason. So that so, but let's stick with the simple uh, rent to price versus versus the real interest rate. And historically, real interest rates I think in the U.S. have been about two or three percent. They vary all over the map, but let's say it's around two to three percent. The rent price ratio, interestingly enough, historically has been, I think, seven to ten percent. Um, so it looks like it's always a good time to buy residential real estate. Now maybe the property taxes fit in there, uh, maybe the depreciation fits in there, but uh, on average uh, it's often a good time. Now, if and during the housing bubble, the price to rent ratio, uh, at least in some areas, went as high as 20, so that the rent price ratio was around 5%, let's say 4 to 5% at the peak of the bubble. And even that is higher than this <laughs> real rate. Now that doesn't mean you did well buying at the peak because what happened if you bought at the peak is that prices fell. Uh, there's something about a normal rent to price ratio that's kind of self-fulfilling. If something, if you, if this is the normal ratio and the price gets above that, uh, so that the rent price ratio gets below it, then prices are going to fall subsequently uh, and so that when prices fall that means that the real interest rate uh, gets to be very high. So again there's something self-fulfilling about this normal rent price ratio. Um, so to get to the main point is that the choice to invest in real residential real estate versus keeping money in the bank will be a good choice when the rent price ratio is greater than the real interest rate. And so that would be the main criteria for deciding to invest in real estate. And now next time I'll talk about whether the form of investing in real estate ought to be uh, buying your own home.